But even before we get into the details of that, yesterday, Judith Awachi Tandos sat down with some um, bondholders, individual bondholders and some pensioners. And there's one particular story that I would want you to watch before I introduce my guest. So take a look. Engineers, so I travel with the ships, we go all around the world. But this what happens that uh, any place we go or any port we, we arrived at, uh, I normally go to the town to send money to the family. So I was advised to, to, to use the banks. So I let put some money in the bank so that uh, I can authorize them to give the money to my family so that I don't be going. So I just started somewhere, uh, 19, uh, that was 1990, around there, with the banks, putting some money with the, the treasure bill. So when I came down, I said, okay. Then I started with the data bank open, so they call it FPAC. So I invested into the, I invested into the FPAC, in the data bank. 208, there is like a Ponzi scheme. The money went down and the money collapsed. So I, I confronted the, this one. Then also, but then I confronted them. It was became like an argument where we thought that that's why I withdrew my money. The little that they would give me, I withdrew. So, so I left some small money with them, but then because you cannot take all the money, so I left with them. So all of a sudden, also, then I, then I started with the, the Ghana Commercial Bank at the, the high street. A branch, the one with that, started with them, investing with them with the treasure bill. Then uh, the, that, that also was going a little bit okay. I don't have any problem, it was going. So it came to a time, and I said, okay, let me. The, my cousin came to me, so he has got a, a friend or something in a. In this was Fianima. Another case, a KFC investment. So I withdrew all the money from uh, this Ghana Commercial Bank with NIB because I was having a, a do, this was the dollar account with NIB and I have the euro account with the, this Echo Bank. I withdrew all the money, then we invested into that uh, account. Into that account. That was, that was then they, they give a 25% interest. It was, it was okay. That also, all of a sudden, 2016, that, that also is gone. I lost 298,000. 298, also, it's, it's lost. Up to today, I haven't got it yet. It was that uh, thinking, and then when I, I saw that I have nothing left, because I have nothing left, then I, fell, then I became. Because I was even to so. so I started going to the sea. The, now the Black Star Line was with the Black Star Line. Black Star Line also collapsed. So we, we go to offshore, Holland. I've been to Singapore, been to all the places. <clears throat> so I was in uh, uh, this one. But diabetes, 2012, I was having diabetes. So I cannot go to any place anymore because my, my movement is, is restricted. So the food have to be everything. So I, I cannot go in. So I depend on this uh, debt. So I invested into uh, the bond. So I had the land at uh, Ashama. So I sold the land because the investment I had for all the money uh, I have done at the sea is gone. So I had the land at uh, Lebanon. Uh, this one. So I sold it. So when I sold it, I decided that okay, I will not eat the money. Or oh, when I spend the money, the, the, this was so let me rather invest it so that when the interest I will be, that's what I'll be using. So I invested it in the Ghana Commission, but I don't want to do a private business anymore, so I invested in there. And, the, and then the, it's okay, let's four years back. Uh, four years back would be, that's okay. Because it got, yeah, the, it, it, it's, it's four years back. So I invested into that one. Then it was also going nicely. The three years old, it's going to mature. The first one matured, so I reinvested it for seven years. Because every six months, that's what I take for my medical 
expenses, uh, buying the diabetes because I have to test my blood pressure, uh, glucose, these ones, everything. I have to be testing them before I can eat or something like that. So that's the money I've been using for all those things, the all of a sudden. So now I've invested for, for seven years, which was 2021. Uh -huh. Even the first, the, 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 I've got the two coupons already. The third one is going to be on January 23rd. Uh -huh. So that's what I've planned my everything upon, or that's why I depend my food and everything. Because I cannot go anywhere, I cannot move, I cannot go anywhere anymore. I don't do anything. So I depend on that. Then all of a sudden, I was hearing it. So I got, uh, I called uh, this one, GOB, uh, uh, Bank of Ghana. So that's where we try. I called them and they, so they told me that. So I wanted to take the when I was hearing the or when I was hearing this, I decided to take my money. So when I went to the bank, the Nungwa branch where I was. So I was told if I want to take the money, they will discount it. They, 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 so, they, so when they discount it, it is going to be half. So I, I, I it was one thousand. It was one hundred sixty thousand. I put there. So they are going to discount it. So these are going to give me only 81,000. So the girl advised me, so far as the second one is going to mature, fully mature in March. So let me wait. So when that one mature, I should not do anything. So when that one mature there, then I will take my money, I will take that, so that we, I can do anything. So let me leave what will happen to this one. Then all of a sudden, we are hearing it. When we hear that, uh, this, I call the bank. Every time I've been calling the Ghana Commission, oh, there's, there's nothing. Your money is okay. Your service is okay. You are going to. But on the 25th of December, then all of a sudden, we are told that uh, the individual bondholders are also included. She says, I don't know how to do because all my plans and everything on it. Here I am. The land I've got is not a good place. It's, I'm, I'm, uh, there, there is a stream, stream at my back here. So what happens is that when the rainy season comes, the, it runs through the place and it gets a little bit flooded. Fourth time, this house was flooded. My books, even the, 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 these are my things here. Everything floods. My, my rooms and everything. Oh, you see everything is gone. So these are the books there, the Bible and everything. They are all gone. Now, what is happening at the moment now that uh, I don't want the next rainy season to come and catch me up again. Not, so when it comes, I can, there's nothing I can do. And that's a 77-year-old uh, Peter Kojo Nyasepe. And um, he's an individual bondholder. And in fact, further, he did say that he's a diabetic patient and he was relying on these returns, um, you know, to be able to buy medicine and basically just take care of himself. Unfortunately, he finds himself in this situation as a result of the inclusion of individual bondholders in the domestic debt restructuring um, program and exchange program. So uh, we'll, we'll get into the conversation, but let me introduce my guest this morning. Lerato Musa Saka is here. As usual, every Thursday, we give the platform to the women to also uh, dig into the issues. And she's a member of the NPP communications team. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Thank and you. Happy New Year. Happy, oh, we haven't met this year. Oh, oh Happy New Year. Yeah, I hope it started on a good note. We you hesitated, you're not sure. No, we have life, that's the most important thing. The okay. rest will follow. Mm. And also, um, I'm meeting her for the first time actually on the platform today. Ajua Ejapoma Ansong. She's a member of the NDC communications team. Good morning to you. Good morning, How are you Bella. Doing? I am fine. Where have you been? I haven't seen you, I haven't heard of you. <laughs> and today you're here. It's actually good to see you this morning. The same. Everything I have been okay? watching you. A oh, very okay. long time, yes. I see. And I have been around. Okay. Well, mm. it's good to have you this mm. morning. We're expecting Anaya Achimpim Jantua to join us. She's the General Secretary for the CPP. But let's get into our conversation. And Lerato, I'll start off with you. Yes. And I'm sure you've heard a lot of people narrate their ordeal. Yeah. Um, you know, very harrowing, very heartbreaking. But to listen to this man, a 77-year-old, who unfortunately has not been too lucky with investments and was hoping that at least finally... 
after being convinced that government bonds are the most secure, he decided to invest in that, and now he's being told that he would have to either lose a part of it, of course, if he does not sign on to the domestic debt exchange program. How do you feel about this as a government communicator? Um, Bella, I think it goes beyond how I feel as a government communicator or someone within government. It's a matter of what the Ghanaian is going through, and we are all in this together. Stories like this, I mean, we've come really far as a nation from people keeping their monies in their beds, in their mattresses under their cupboards and all that to getting people save in the banks and uh, invest in uh, all these uh, investment uh, programs. So it's not something that any well-meaning Ghanaian will be excited about. But the challenge here is we find ourselves in a, a crisis which is no news anymore and we have to find ways of getting out of it. I mean, apart from the 77-year-old man, there's another video of a 66-year-old man yeah. who also quite, and these are the realities. I mean, mm. people's livelihood depends on some of these things. These are people who've planned their pensions, who've planned their lives based on the hard work they did. Mm. There are also younger people, ordinary um, people, I mean, for lack of a better expression, who have also put their monies in uh, some of these investments. So it's a very difficult situation we find ourselves in. But what um, is going on in terms of uh, the engagements and all that is something that we all need to be interested in and see how best together we can all get uh, an amicable way out. The ministry of finance yesterday after all the engagements met pensioners met bankers and all that mm. met the individual bondholders yeah. who initially were not supposed to be part but i know this whole operation is going through a process mm. their engagements they keep reviewing to get the best way out yesterday they had a meeting mm -hmm. with the minister of finance and the agreement was to set up a technical committee so they come out with a i mean the ministry is open to a giving an individual bond all the con concessions and all that. Mm. So I think at this point, let's all be interested in the engagements, whatever uh, contributions people have to get us the most workable alternative mm. is what we all need to be working at. But it they should have been engaged before, which is the concern. The, the, probably the only reason the finance ministry had to meet them at this time was because they were calling out the ministry and saying that if you knew that you were going to include us, why did you not engage us before announcing it? I mean, what can I say about it? It's better late than never. They were initially not part of the process, but going along the reviewing. We started with four bonds, now they are 12. Mm. We started with a zero uh, uh, coupon rate for 2020, now it's 2%, gradually. And it's not like it started. Implementation hasn't started. Mm. It's still going through the uh, consultation and trying to refine it process. So I think we all need to come together and uh, make sure that this works to the interest of every Ghanaian. Mm. Those complaining are not people from other any other country. This is a, a domestic issue. We all need to come together and uh, keep re stop rehashing the problem and see how best. We can are you affected in any way? And, and that's the question that Ghanaians are asking a lot of government officials, that it looks as if you're all not affected and so this is really not a bother to you. That's why you don't really understand the depth of um, the situation that Ghanaians are facing at the moment, on the verge of losing their investments, um, you know, by no fault of this. They say we are not affected. Uh, I want to understand what it means by not affected. Even well, if okay. I'm not affected directly, and I have a friend, I have a family member. If the man who spoke was my father or mm. my grandfather, mm. I may not be directly affected, but I'm affected by But it. if your investments I'm were being touched, I'm in government. would you Bella, still go ahead on, with even, this even on a normal kind day, of exchange program? Even on a normal day, if someone makes a promise to you and doesn't fulfill it, it affects you. So it's not like government officials are not affected. I don't think anybody knows any government officials' uh, investment uh, dealings and all that it's not it's not up to anybody these are private things that people do 
It's not up to anybody to come out and be putting all that. So that conversation about government officials are not, yeah, I think we need to look at it. It's a, we are all in it. It's a, a program that is a, what did the uh, finance minister say? Burden sharing. We are all citizens. Can we singling out someone doesn't make the difference. We find ourselves at a point where we all need to come together. Mm -hmm. Because what, what's the point? But how are we if, sharing the burden? How are we sharing because the burden? Because it looks like citizens are taking a chunk of the burden. How is government taking a part of the burden as well? You saw all those things that are, apart from all that is going on, the other interventions that are going on. But Bella, you see, we also need to avert our minds to how we got here. If COVID taught us nothing, it taught us that when a push comes to shove, every country is on their own, right? Mm. We, we, we had um, financial issues and all that. I mean, there are certain things that uh, we didn't really uh, get on track, but there are also certain things that we also did right. So the indices differ along the way. It hasn't been totally gloomy, but we really find ourselves in a very difficult situation that we need everybody to come on board to do it. There have been cuts of uh, perks to uh, appointees and all that. There have been cuts on discretionary. There are, new, there are uh, innovations coming up, especially uh, with this uh, gold for oil, which I know will but, come But can you compare that to, that. for example, the 77-year-old so man who says that at the time when he wanted to withdraw his money because he had heard that uh, there was going to be a domestic debt exchange program. He had over 100,000. He was told that if he withdrew it at that point, he was going to lose about, he was just going to get about 80,000 of that. And for him, he didn't understand how that would be possible, especially when he had done no wrong at all. And so if you look at the cuts that government has initiated in you know, cutting down expenditure, can that be compared to how much well, people are losing? I mean, from 0% uh, coupon rates to having to wait a number of years before they start making earnings on their investments. But what I'm saying is, it hasn't, the implementation hasn't started. Mm -hmm. I mentioned we started with one. The first one was four months. Now it's 12. Conversations are still ongoing. It's a different case where implementation has started and the conversation are still ongoing. Can we all just and see how best this happens? The issue of, oh, this one is doing that, that one is doing that. Because as we go along, the other interventions that are being put in place, if it builds the economy, I'm sure this, um, this approach may not even last the period that is being stipulated to land. These well, things we cannot we say that for a fact. No, that's what I'm saying. When market changes, all things, when we, um, when the exchange rate started um, going up, mm. prices changed. You get it? You're talking about the December, no, that's what the I'm, end of December that's what period. I'm saying. The, it didn't last the, long. No, but what I'm saying is the market also is not static. It moves. There are other interventions being put in place. There are interventions being put in place to uh, reduce the burden on our forex and all, our forex demand and all. There are other things we, we've engaged IMF and all that. When all those things go, it will also have a certain boost uh, to the economy. It might come also come out and adjust some of the things and we may have another way out of these things. So let's just look at how best as we have the conversations. The people meeting the finance ministry equally have experts amongst them. Mm. I'm sure they, if the meeting they had yesterday was not one that they were comfortable with. I don't think they would have agreed to uh, setting up a committee to make recommendations on the way forward. So I think these are the parts that we should all be paying attention to, to make sure that we come up with the best thing that lessens the burden of the Ghanaian. Well, before Adjoa comes in, let's take a look at lawyer Martin Pebu after the meeting um, that the individual bondholders had with the finance ministry yesterday. Now, the question was basically, what is this technical team really going to do? And he sort of broke it down for us to better understand what it meant. Please take a look. Yeah, so the, Alfred, good evening. The committee has a task of uh, helping government to identify the the very areas that we think government needs to cut down, needs to cut back in terms of expenditure. So this is the whole thing. When we went, we saw 
one big argument, which are several subsets. But a big argument is that the government should protect or secure livelihoods before going on to further developmental projects. In other words, just as government is going to pay public sector workers, the individual bondholders also rely on the bonds and the coupons as salaries. So it means if you pay public sector workers, pay individual bond uh, holders as uh, they to their salaries. So it means that everybody should be able to survive first before we ask for further development. Let's not forget that uh, human beings are also a very crucial, a very mm -hmm. critical component of the factors of production, right? Labor. Yeah, so when the human uh, beings are alive, you have the opportunity to be able to increase production. So save them first, right? And mm -hmm. so as we're making the argument, eventually the finance minister said, yes, yes, I think this point is being uh, well flogged. <laughs> that, that, that argument has been well flogged, like the way we say flogging a horse. So since we've uh, done extremely well in expatiating that point, okay, let's just go ahead and have a committee to go into the technical details of it. Because you see that quickly, we're pointing out that, oh, the 27 billion for capital expenditure, why don't you cut on it? Why don't you cut on some goods and services? Uh, the number of ministries, all those things. So they say, okay. When, when, you, make, the, when you made those proposals about cutting down uh, the expenditure of government, what was the finance minister's position on it, reducing the size of government and so on? Yeah, he wasn't opposed to it at all. He welcomed it. He embraced it. That's how come he said, okay, we should go and flesh out the details um, at the committee level. Because now we were giving specific examples. And you know, the 27 billion, the almighty 27 billion for capital expenditure, you know, it's the easiest to, to attack because that's quite colossal. So it's easy to cut down. You see, the context is that Last year, we spent about 15, 16 billion on capital expenditure. And this year, is going to 27. So you see a very high leak. If we were to deduct this year, about 6.6 .6 billion of the bonds are maturing. OK, so if we're deducting 6.6 .6 from 27, then you get 20.4. So you see that it's easy. And if you even get 20.4, you'll still find that it's still higher than last year's 15, approximately to 16 billion Ghana cities. Do you see? So there's still an increment. Then there are other areas of the budget, the goods and services, etc. Right. So that, that's the whole argument. So he embraced it. No, it wasn't a fight at all. Okay, so what a lawyer, Martin Kwebu, explaining what the technical committee um, would be working on. But we've also been joined by Nanaya Chimpin Janto, the general secretary of the CPP. Good morning, Good morning and you're welcome. I hope hey, you're well. You're looking good, Ray. Thank you, you too. Hey, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ajoa, so coming to you, I mean, now a technical committee has been set up, but the question then would be, did we really need to get here? Do we need this committee at all? Good morning to you, viewers. Um, Bella. I have had a little time to think about everything that has been happening, um, especially from the beginning of this whole debt, domestic debt exchange um, program. Mm. And it is my personal belief that perhaps we're dealing with a very twisted government. As a behavioral scientist, I particularly describe this kind of governance as a, what we call the Munchausen syndrome by proxy. That is, um, it, it's a psychological condition of caregivers, especially people who have a duty mm -hmm. to take care of another. It could be fiduciary, like a government has a fiduciary to take care of citizens. Mm -hmm. They rather turn around to be the ones to inflict the most pain on the people they are supposed to protect and care for. Because Bella, what could be more painful than saving some money and having certain dreams and sometimes people even save because of their children because their children are an extension of themselves and you plan your future accordingly only for a government who thinks that he has right to you and that which is yours so he can just put his hand into your resources 
without your consent and unilaterally expropriate it to bail himself out after taking all the wrong decisions, even though he was warned from the beginning by the minority and even some uh, CSOs, this government feels that it, it has the power to, you know, do as it's pleased. Because, Bella, make it make sense. How do you, as a government, elected to make my life better? Mm. As you came, you have accrued about 80% of our national debt stock. You caused the depreciation, over 60% depreciation of the city. By your mismanagement, you took the city from about 4 CD to a dollar, went all the way to 15 cities, and then now back to about 11 cities. You have recorded the highest unemployment rate of about 13.4%, and you criticized 8.4%. You, you came under the guise of a banking sector cleanup, collapsed jobs, and took young people out of their jobs. People suffered losses, and some people have still not been able to recover from... But the banking sector, they did explain that if they didn't take that decision at that time, we would have incurred more losses. Bella, how does it make Eventually. sense? How does it make sense that banks needed about $9 billion to be bailed out and at the end we use 25 billion to, to clean the, the sector you know so some of these things they can be saying it to us but at least we have common sense how can you say that it was better to use 25 billion to solve a problem 9 billion could solve and in the process you caused people to lose you know their jobs and livelihood and everything as if it was not enough that we're really under this government taking inflation from 15% to over 50%, 54.1%, people are suffering. At some point in this country, under this government, diesel price saw an increment of about 600%. This is hard enough. And then the finance minister and his friends decides that um, organized labor has agitated and pushed back on the attempt to, uh, uh, to add pension funds, and so, you know, in any proper government, any proper country, after facing such a pushback, you would have come back and thought about it when you decided you wanted to add individual bondholders. Mm. You would have engaged them because you made the first mistake. But what we see is that this government has some arrogant posture. What I see is that there is zero emotional intelligence. There is zero. How do you say that? And you because say you're posture. yeah, they engage the individual bondholders yesterday. That is have after agreed to a technical committee. That is after the agitation. And I want to um, applaud um, the minority and individuals and other people who, you know, came together to agitate, to compel the government to sit with them. Because if this government knows anything about contracts, you cannot unilaterally decide to expropriate people's resources to bail out your mistakes. You cannot do that. And so I want to applaud everybody who put their voice into this. But the way I look at it, it is really, really you know, twisted to me. That's a, a person because he thinks he has been given power by the people. The power emanates from the people. Mm -hmm. So you can use that power to lord over the people instead of serving them. And that is not why we give power to... But they said to, it's voluntary. You can decide to sign on or not. Bella, you asked the question. If the man wanted to take his money, was he going to get the full amount, the principal? No. He wasn't, so it's not voluntary. If I'm going to you, if I'm going to lose some part of my principal, if I decide not to do it, that wasn't the contract. That wasn't the contract. And so, for me, for a government who have come and performed this bad and caused so much hardship, for a government who have not been able to build anything monumental and has hinged its success on its ability to build toilets across the country. They are building had... a cathedral. They are building Agenda 111. <laughs> like, that I mean... is very laughable. Well, that's what they say they're doing. That so... is very, very laughable. And so when, uh, when Dr. Baumia came out to talk about their achievements, I remember the video. He talked about how they've been able to build toilets across the country. I think that you should not even have the audacity to want to touch people's money. The same people who kept cautioning you that, you know, the um, borrowing is too much, the spending is too much. People asked you to merge some ministries. People asked you to do, you know, certain things. But like I said, I will applaud those who agitated for this meeting to come to place. Whilst they sit down, 
and set up this committee to negotiate with government. What they must take into consideration is the fact that even though government is, is willing to, you know, um, draw blood from them slowly because this is the slowest death you can give to anybody. And it is the most wickedest one. And if there's a yeah, word that's like that. That's quite extreme. It is. It is, that Bella. Word. Have you lost money before that you have invested? That's maybe my parents has invested in the, the passive income that comes out of it pays my school fees. You are stealing my future. You understand? And that's, that is a slow death. But if they don't do it now, when can they do it? Because where we are, we're in the doldrums at the moment. We need some of these things to be able to get a deal with the IMF. So, Bella, if you've taken a look at the 2023 budget, mm. you would realize that total revenue projected for this um, 2023 has gone up, has seen an increment of, increment of uh, about 47%. Mm -hmm. Our expenditure is projected to go up from 2022 uh, of about 39%. Goods and services is going up 37%. Capital expenditure, 76%. And the one that even really caught my attention mm. was the miscellaneous, other expenditure. It has seen a 221% increment from about 8 billion to about 26 billion. So this is a government that is asking citizens to you know sacrifice but all we have seen from the 2023 budget there is an increment the government is not cutting off anything there's an increment in when you see it is you see the data the increments the percentages we are seeing them that all our attempt to call on government to merge certain um you know secretariats put um, 1d 1f under trade and ministry special business initiative under uh, trade and ministry fisheries and um cash crop and whatever and the Greek ministry and put railway and aviation and um, roads and everything under um, transport ministry and remove some um, deputy CEOs of some uh, state-owned enterprises that are already making loss and oh, is, people, these state um, enterprises are owing money but you've created some slots for deputy CEO, which used not to exist. And the, the size of the government have been bloated, cut down on the number of presidential staffers. And you know, government needs to lead by example. All our attempts to call government's attention to these things have fallen on deaf ears. So as individual bondholders are going into meetings with government, they, have, they must have at the back of their mind that these are the expenditures of the government. Well, I mean, you had uh, lawyer Martin Pebu, he talked about one of them, which is what he was saying was what they used. They stood on that to tell the minister that mm -hmm. you cannot do this and expect that we will agree to have our monies, um, you know, included mm -hmm. in the domestic debt exchange program. He said the minister did not have a problem with that. Well, we've, we are just watching for them to cut those costs that we are asking them to cost okay. to, to cut because at the end of the day like um, lawyer martin craig said you cannot ask us to sacrifice our personal savings and investments monies that you know was very hard and difficult to come by for the mistakes you have made and what even asks me is the fact that we kept cautioning you and you kept going. You thought it was wise to fly in nine months with about $68 million, $168 million. You thought it was wise to, you know, pay hundred and over $150 million to book runners. Uh, uh, that is our finance minister, taking euro bonds left, right and center. When we cautioned that you need to invest in strategic um, areas of the economy, because if you want to, if you want your, your currency to stabilize, you need to increase your exports and decrease your import. And so you need to invest in strategic areas so that we can produce more and export. They did not listen to us. They kept going on and on and on and on with their spending. So today, if we're here, they are telling us that the debt is not Honorable Ken Oforiate's debt. It is not His Excellency Nanado's debt. It is Ghanaian debt. But when the money was being enjoyed, Okay, it wasn't Ghanaian money. We didn't get some? I didn't get some. Did you? You didn't get anything? Not directly as money, but then uh, constantly, you even here. And I, I had a problem. I'm talking about money, I, even I, COVID I, I, I've money. I had a problem with even the COVID uh, monies, the freebies that we were given, and we're told eventually that we'll have to pay some way, somehow. It's not but like we're told. No, but constantly, Bella, government we are didn't tell us that they were freebies. <laughs> We're no, not, at, that, we at that time they were giving us those things, it was free. Yeah, but today we are paying, and we've been paying since. We've been paying since.
Hmm. So if you buy, um, how do you call it, uh, food stuff on the market, um, you, you pay a levy. Um, how do you call you it? COVID, 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 ta uh, COVID, ta yeah. COVID levy. So we are paying for the water, we are paying for the electricity, and we still keep paying. And you would agree with me that not everywhere in this country even has like electrification or even water going to their homes, but we are still paying anyway. So you give less. But that's, that's a failure of all governments, not just the government in power. But some governments came and extended rural e electrification and water extension projects. We have seen um, the Pong water expansion project. We have seen the Teshi desalination uh, project. We have seen the Pando Toko water project. We have seen, we, we saw the previous NDC governments embarking on some of these things. Okay. So one government cannot do all, but when you come, we expect you to do some of it. Okay. Nanaya, I mean, yes, so this, this technical committee that has been put together, constituted, do you see any results yielding from it? Bella, good morning. And good morning to your viewers and good morning to my comrades in the CPP and good morning to my, my sisters. <laughs> Bella, technical committee for what? To do what? To change what? Just tell me. What is the essence of the technical committee? to say that the domestic debt, debt program will not come on or what? Well, because you see, the government has two options. Either mm -hmm. they go after our pensions or they go after individual bond holders. Do you mm. get me? I mean, that is what it is. And it is their mismanagement. You see, always we talk about cutting down on ministries, cutting down. Have we done some calculation to find out that even if they cut down on those I mean, ministries and I mean, staffers and all that. How much are we going to? Nobody has quantified that amount. And it is time before we speak, we have to quantify that, whatever that translates into, before we can say that truly, if we target those areas, mm. we will be fine. Okay. Number two, this is a government that borrows for consumption. That is all they do. They borrow, there is nothing to show for. They have a penchant for borrowing. It is in their DNA. They cannot change. They, do, they cannot think through the box to change things. They came with a litany from 2015, 2016. Remember, Honorable Kenoforiata was wearing a blouse and they were picketing at the uh, Jubilee House. Mm. You get me? Yeah. They said all manner of things. Occupy Ghana. Yes, today they have occupied Ghana. And what are we seeing? Ghana has been occupied by people who don't have a clue. They don't have a clue of what they are doing. You see, the, the, the easiest thing anybody can do in their life is mm. to borrow and borrow and borrow. But if you borrow, there should be some significant presence of what you have borrowed. But as we stand now, there is nothing. The significant presence is under development, poverty, disease, uh, lack of uh, adequate infrastructure. Today, as we see, PRC has increased tariffs. Yeah. 29%. Based on what? Well, IES says they should come out and give those details. No, but I am saying that it, it does not make sense. Mm. Because you don't do an automatic adjustment formula that high. When PRC did their type, I said categorically at this place that what they have done does not, I mean, it doesn't work with any of the parameters and that they have to do more. But because government came and was populist and said that they are going to reduce tariff, they cannot do what is realistic. And the fact that they reduced tariff in 2017, that is why we are here today. A government that does not even understand the mechanism and dynamics of even the system that they are, they are pretending over. They use 33, 339 million Ghana cities to dig boreholes and dig fish ponds, which has no water. Sitting there, National Cathedral, you go and see galleys. Oh, that's the borehole you're referring to? Yes, of to. course. It, what is there? It looks like what? It looks like a borehole. It's a and, pit. Ah, but what is it? What, what is there? The, I mean, what is there? 339 million to dig a, a semblance of boreholes and, and whatever. And fish ponds. No water in it, nothing. What, what does it look like? That 339 million could have built a cathedral. 30 million dollars computing it, you get 339 million. It could have built a cathedral. <laughs> Even 100 million could build a cathedral. And you have this amount and you haven't done it and you want to come and touch my, my investment. 
the, the finance minister went back to say that he's engaging um, uh, organized labor mm. to go back and uh, touch their pensions. And they said that the government should go and, and uh, uh, the MPs common fund. And the MPs too are saying that their money is only 225 million and it cannot be touched. So can of real touch should start thinking through that any loan that they took, he was richer by $158 million. It is time for them, he and his cohorts, to return that money to us. I don't even know why the bond... Okay, what is the essence of the bondholders meeting, Ken? Meaning that what? Meaning that we agree. No, that's not what they communicated. So what was the use? Because their position initially was that they were not going to allow... But I am saying that if you are not going to, to allow... Why do, yes, why do you go and meet him for what? To, to let him know that they will not... But he, has, he hasn't heard... So why is now a committee? Because some consensus has been reached. When uh, um, lawyer Kwebu was talking, he said, oh, it wasn't fight, it was Jojo. What it means, once you meet, then it means that consensus has been reached, and it means that you are ready to let go. But they should think about the people in there who are pensioners, who live on coupons from these bonds, who, live, who have a future. Some people have even put their funeral plan in the bonds. They have children, grandchildren to look after. Medicine. It is when you are after 60 that you know what sickness is. It is all factored into the bond. They took their lump sum and they use it to buy bonds. Bella, how come that a risk-free instrument mm. has become the most riskier instrument in this country? Because the, the government bonds were the ones that you know that when you put your money in there, you are good to go. Yeah. Now look at what has happened. We are not in normal times. What is normal times? Bella, what do we see? Normal times, are we dead? Bella, we are alive. What is normal times? Has Jesus come? The only time that we are not in normal time, when we see Jesus coming from the sky and coming to take his beloved, that is when it is not normal. That is when it, it has ended. So you say individual bondholders should not have even agreed to this committee or should not have met what the ministry at all? What is the essence of the committee? Yesterday, the, the party that he, he his minister in called him. Mm. I had, I think, two, three days ago. Has he come out to implement what the people said? Has he come out to say that I am stopping? Well, me, I don't know why Ghanaians are like that. Too. Why should they go and meet him? For what? Because when he was make, taking his decision, he did not even consult you. So but, why do you go and but, meet but him? But two wrongs don't make a right. He didn't my, consult. But we come dear, out to say he didn't my, consult. I am saying, now let's I am consult say, and I'm reach saying, an agreement. You don't agree, think that, that you, was necessary? My dear, why do you mismanage the economy and come and touch my investment? Me, I don't understand it all. Because you see, in this world there, you cut your coat according to your size. If you cut your coat too big, it will, you will look like a scarecrow. If you cut it too small, it will be tight, you can't breathe. There is a reason why there is that, that saying. You have to live within your means. You have to be prudent. Why are we here? We are talking about COVID. COVID, if ever you got COVID and we got the kind of money that we got in COVID, then it means COVID is not bad at all. We got over $3 billion. What we are today, we are asking IMF to give us. What can we show for that largesse? The sort of like free money. You talked about free business. They, they, they campaigned on free electricity, free water. I remember 31st December, I was buying a prepaid. Mm. The 2020. The announcement I heard was that it has ended. They use it for elections. Everything is populist. You see, this government wants to impoverish everybody, erase the middle class. It is the agenda. So why Make, would they want to do that? What yeah, for? because then they will be up there going. You see, gradually I'm looking at something. I'm saying that this uh, Japa or uh, Japa whatever came out, I thought that it wasn't anything. But going back to see what is going on, it is clear in my mind that there is an agenda to erase the middle class so there's no competition for them. A certain group of people, but it will not happen. Because when that thing came, I thought, oh, this one is just some joke. I didn't even read, but as I look at events going on, I see that there is a clear attempt to make sure that there's no middle class in here to compete them. You see, the people who went to meet the finance minister, mm. They should have rather told him to do some work. What work exactly? Yes. How many people are on the uh, um, instruments who are pensioners? Who cannot let their money go? Mm. Who cannot let their money stay for it to be rolled over small, small 
um, percentages. And 5% on my bond, how much is it? How is he going to sustain me? He should do more work. Technical committee to do what? How, how far would that technical committee go? Well, I'm asking you. Because there are people that, I mean, they should start, this government, eh? They should start thinking about who the Ghanaian is. They should start thinking that Ghanaians are human beings but not robots. Ghanaians are people who live and, and have blood in them. And Ghanaians are people who need resources to survive. Because if a Ghanaian is sick, he or she cannot afford to go to Mayo Clinic. They'll go to Kolibu. Mm. They'll go to uh, um, SNIT. And even these SNIT and things, it is not cheap. So when you are putting anything in place, you need to think about it. And when you are conducting your life as um, a, a, a government, you should know that you are dealing with people and looking after the resources of people. So you need to be careful how you deal with it. Bella, this government has borrowed so largely more than any other government in this our era of, of existence as a nation. 20, uh, 20, 1957 to 2017, our loan portfolio, our debt portfolio was 1 to 1 um, billion Ghana cities. Today, it's almost 548. If you took out the forex, it's about 312 billion Ghana cities in a matter of six, seven years. And they don't even care. They still travel. They shouldn't travel. To go where? Where should you leave this country to go when we are in this situation? Today, where is the president? I've heard he's gone to Abu Dhabi or wherever. Well, after that, we're told he has a private meeting in London, so he would go. But what, what, you don't think that that, that meeting he I had am in Abu Dhabi was necessary? I am saying that to do what? What is it bringing to us? They said something about emissions or something environmental. So mm -hmm. For what? When your country is on fire. When you didn't tell us the truth. I remember when he came to give a nation's address after we complained that they didn't consult us on the IMF. This man said that there's no haircut. I remember when he said, sometimes I feel hurt when I, I believe in him. I feel cheated. Because I, when he said that, a friend called me and said that, Nanaya, this is not true. I said, he cannot lie to us. There will be nothing like a haircut. Because he has said it. And look at where we are. That you stood on TV, the whole nation, and didn't tell us the truth. Maybe if at that time, he had said that there's a possibility of a haircut. Maybe we would have imbibed it better. You don't think that there would have been a rush on the banks to withdraw which, money? Which rush? If you want to withdraw money, it didn't not my own money. Now you can't withdraw your money. Look, I use myself as an example. I left PURC not as a pensioner, but I contributed for almost, um, I think, about 10 years mm. towards the, sec the first and second tier. After 10 years, you are able to take your... Uh, interest. Mm -hmm. If you want it rolled over, you roll it over. You, if you want to take it. I went, I couldn't access it. What was you, the reason? Uh, because of all these pro uh, things going on. So, Bella, if you look at me, I might not talk. But if you look at me, you sack me from my job. Hmm? Whatever I am doing, I'm not even getting the right jobs to do. You sacked me. I am a professional. You sacked me. Because what, was, what was the reason? Yes, because you, you said all manner of reasons. I was doing my job. I was sad. Now I have money in an investment. I have to get it, the, the interest to live. I am, you said I cannot touch it. I am worse off than even a pensioner. Do you get me? And there are some people like that. So what are you trying to tell us? So when you were mismanaging and borrowing, misman you did not think through what you were doing. Don't they have books? He is the book runner. Data bank. Mm. So didn't they see what was going on as they borrowed and borrowed and borrowed? And borrowing from today, Bella, apart from free SHS, of which there are issues, what can this government tell us that they have done? That is a flagship program that is making Ghana strong and great again. His Excellency Mahmoud Baumia said that this government will never depend on taxation to develop. To depend on taxation is a lazy man's approach for the economic development. They are going to use production. That's the 1D, 1F. What is the export portfolio of this country? And how much exchange is coming into the kitty through exports? Everything is importation. 
Imports has increased by 70% of poultry products, everything, chewing gum, chewing stick, everything is being imported. 70% or more. From 2017 till now. For this government, everything is business. They don't care. So they'll create the opportunity for their people to be important and they'll be giving them exemptions. There is no import substitution plan. When 2023 budget was read, the minister said that government is going to cut down on importation a certain percentage, blah, blah, blah. There's mm. going to be an import substitution plan. Where is that plan? Where is that plan? Okay. Let me let Lerato come in. And, yes, and, and, uh, and, and, and let's go all the way back to the committee because Nanaya doesn't think that that committee was even no, needed I mean, in the first place. We understand we are in a difficult time. We understand things are hard. But I think that sometimes we also need to be measured in the allegations. Well, what's your church allegations, Larato? Who is uh, this? Can I, can can I please please let her make a point. <laughs> Let's understand what we she's need trying to, to be say first. Measured in some of the allegations we throw out and some of the sentiments we try to uh, raise. The bond, uh, you, uh, you played a video of uh, one of the leaders of the lawyers of the. Uh, individual bondholders, they've gone, had a meeting. He himself, everybody knows how critical lawyer Martin Pebu has been of the government. Mm. But what did he say? It wasn't, uh, it was Giorgio. Mm -hmm. They've agreed to set up a technical committee. The technical committee is supposed to have their first meeting today. Mm -hmm. They haven't come out with anything. We haven't heard anything contrary to what the bondholders have recommended. And we're already throwing it out. But that's what she's saying, that there was no need to yeah. even have that why meeting with the there, finance why ministry. Wasn't, why wasn't there the need? Government opens Tell us a what, program, what, why, why right, mm -hmm. doesn't initially. It keeps being because conversations keep going on. Mm. Now, bondholders have been invited. It wasn't like, come and do it. It was mm -hmm. an invitation, voluntary. Bondholders think that we shouldn't be part of it. They spoke in. There's a meeting with the person supposed to operationalize it. Operationalization hasn't started. Mm. They have a meeting. They agree that based on the meeting they had, there's need for a technical meeting to make well-informed recommendations mm. that will uh, cushion everybody. To it. Why don't we wait for this committee to do that? start throwing all these red herrings in? These things head. don't help with nation you building. You didn't know when you, you were don't borrowing. use you don't use a mistake re to correct them. Let's even assume all that she said is true. Shouldn't we fix it? And in fixing Are we not it, fixing it? Have to yes, you Ghanaians need have to, to suffer. Yeah. What, what, what is governance? When what you say is what governance? is governance, yes. what, what do you mean by that? When you are doing something for the people, uh -huh. you just, you make a decision. You've made an invitation. When the people were telling you that you were not doing that is right, what is you did not mind anybody. Now. You, you see, went ahead to when borrow, borrow, borrow. Adra was speaking, no, no, when mm -hmm. Adra was speaking, she was categorical. She's, uh, I'm not, I'm even done with Nanaya. <laughs> when Adra was speaking. That was fast. Yes, yes, because <laughs> I don't see how she should be throwing all uh, these things when what, the what meeting of the technical what, committee the has technical it. Committee? Did any of the people who went for that meeting push against but, the but technical committee? But she has committee? a right to her opinion. Yes, yes. She says that she that's didn't what I'm saying. But need. all these opinions yes. you're throwing and no, there all these no allegations, need. I don't think it helps in national building. Nanaya, let me have my time. Thank you. Please, let me have my time. Thank you. When Nanaya was speaking, you know, I was listening to her quietly, and she was emphatic. She's a behavioral scientist. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that as a behavioral scientist, your, uh, what you learn, what you're supposed to teach others, also applies to the kind of language you use on set. Some, she used some languages that I thought you were going to get her to. Like uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. But let me go to like some what? of the if things that me to call some out of the things. Like Bella, what, let me continue. Because let me, I, I let don't me use, think I let heard me use, anything let me use that my, I needed let to me stop use her my from saying. Don't worry. We find ourselves in a difficult time. Emotions are high. So now when we even hear language, that's not... No, accepted. but you're making a claim. Bella, let so me continue you, with you, my time. You need to go she full throttle and let me understand. She made an statement that... What exactly we have was I supposed highest, to stop her from? We have the highest unemployment rate assistance. And I want her to go and check. 
if she did her own research or someone gave her notes, she needs to go and recheck whatever figures she was given or whatever figures she saw. The highest unemployment rate was in 2000, year 2000, 10.4, a little over 10.4. That was year 2000. Who was in power in year 2000? In 2001, it came to 9.7 and uh, 9.5. As at the time, MPP was leaving office in 2008, mm -hmm. it was a little over 4.9. In 2009, when the NDC took over, it was 5.2, a little over 5.2%. As at the time they were leaving office in 2016, it was 5.53 thereabouts. Mm. In 2017, it came to 4.2, a uh, 4.2, a little over 4.2. As it stands now, the unemployment rate is 4.7. So we were told that we have the highest. Uh, has done a great service. And I think we should check it. all the, the budgets that she's copiously uh, quoting from. Has it been passed or not? Mm. It's been passed. Who passed it? It's the Parliament of Ghana. So if you come and sit here and you applaud your members of Parliament when an appropriation act has been passed and all that, and we are all supposed to come together and build it. See, I always say this, the fact that you are in opposition doesn't mean you need to oppose everything. And let that's me, what, and that's why I complain. Let, let me read something to you, because Best this was um, a research that was conducted by, um, by the West Africa Project, funded by the World Bank. Yes, please. And it said that, and this was in, on 2nd September 2022. Yes, please. It says that about 1.74 million of the total working population of 13 million in the age brackets of 15 years and above mm. in the first quarter of the year was mm. unemployed mm. and was conducted by the Ghana Statistical mm. Service. By, and so that 1.74 million yes. is, represents 13.4%. Yes, but you are not looking, we are not looking at, she didn't say youth unemployment or Napo. any other thing. She mm -hmm. said unemployment rates. Okay. So you are taking a cohort out of the unemployment population and giving me a figure. Okay. She stated unemployment rate. Okay. That is what I was trying to rectify. And that is what we, we shouldn't be throwing figures out. We need to verify some of these things. If we want to break it down mm. based on the various cohorts within the population who have different figures. Okay. Because there are different age categories within the unemployment space. So we need to check then the data I was giving was from nineteen ninety one to 2021, mm. you can check on that. I can provide you with that so you can verify. Okay. You get it. We have, the, the, the thing is, we have, granted, we have over borrowed. Let's assume that's the situation. We realized, okay, we need to look at domestic resource mobilization. There's a lot of opposition as to e levy But in 2022, that was our main revenue generation instrument. What happened to it? So the 6.9 billion that was projected, if we have even been able, if they had come together and supported it, brought our suggestions, you remember how inconsistent they were. In mm. one breath, we're okay with they reduce it to 1.1. In another breath, reduce it to this. And all. Then suddenly, they were totally against it. Pushed people. And that is why I was saying that when we start something as a nation, when we start to build something and rectify something, let's mm. hold ourselves from throwing in all the negatives. So even before it started, we throw in all kinds of negatives. Muddy the waters, then at the end of the day, we don't get the kind of results that we are getting. Till date, people have a phobia for e levy. But we could have all come together in the sense of looking at revenue, domestic revenue mobilization, mm. do the review of it as we started. And we could have uh, done, made some, uh, in addition to the t uh, assistant taxes and all the other revenue mobilization avenues that we have. But you see, if we keep doing this, at the end of the day, even if MPP is in power for 20 years, 30 years, 
it will get to a point another government will come to power. As we run now, Nanaya is going to take me on on it. But we, are, we have two leading political parties. Mm. But if the alternative is opposing everything that is supposed to build our microeconomy, like what? build like our what? economy. Like what exactly? The, look, we, we stand they, for the they, people of Ghana. That is what we stand Nanaya, for. Nanaya, please let her land no, no, so no, I can I take a break. Please, please. Her to you let her things. make her point. We stand for the people of Ghana. What are they opposing? We created this Nanaya. nation. You can Lerato. come and Nanaya, tell her that we are opposing everything. As it stands, uh -huh. CPP, I don't think the uh, the last election. I don't think you even made one point one percent. No, but it's not about that. You're saying they're opposing that, everything that, that, that government that is trying to implement yes. to develop if the nation. The like right what? Thing, we yes. will, we will applaud you. Like what? what yeah. Like revenue up? mobilization thing. But like things that took care. So what? Just taxation, recently. Taxation, just recently. Taxation, just recently. Like what? Just recently. But your the own party said we're moving from taxation to production. Just recently, even the gold foil that has just started. They already. Uh, what is uh, hold on with that gold for oil, actually. Hold on with that gold for oil. What have, they opposed? Uh, what have you they opposed? What have you they used to no full fighting to? Nobody will oppose. Yeah. Anyway, we'll no take a break at this point. Yeah. In fact, we'll bring in the conversation no, no, yeah. about gold for oil and no, really what they all make of this policy and whether it will bring us the benefits that we require. Keep watching. This is the Ministry of TV News.